All right, you guys seem to like my homemade backyard do-it-yourself type of tools. And I have to say this is obviously not the way you're supposed to do this, but I do have to do some work cutting this drive shaft. It's for the gearbox of the V8 jet ski. And I built my own lathe so I could make the cuts uh, more or less straight as opposed to being crooked. So check this out. It spins right there. Right now I'm cutting a little piece off the end here. I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up right now so you guys can see. I added a little reservoir to the gearbox, so it'll have a little bit more oil capacity, and I'm hoping that, that will be a good thing and will be helpful for this thing to have a little bit more oil circulating through it. Behind me, you may notice that I have the V8 jet ski all put back together, and yes, I know that it is Wave Runner, and we call it a jet ski because that is sort of general terminology that most normal people use to describe any personal watercraft. Here's a little bit of an explanation of why I was cutting that shaft and working in the gearbox. So, you know, I have the ski opened up just for kind of maintenance, just to check and see what was wrong. And I figured I would go through the gearbox and check that out. And I ended up buying a, another shaft so I could build the correct idler shaft for the gearbox. So I went ahead and did that. And here's one of the old idler gear setups. And we run... It, the box is set up to run two idler gears, but I'm switching to one just so that we can have a little bit less of the parasitic drag, which is somebody had to remind me of what I was talking about. I couldn't think of it the other day, but it doesn't really matter. The issue I ha was having with these original stub shafts or idler shafts is I needed this part to be longer and we were using this extension that would screw into there and the problem is that I couldn't get the extension to stay on so I kept saying it was three pieces and it needs to be one well really it's three pieces and it needs to be two because the shaft should just be one piece and then the gear should slide on so what I ended up doing was buying another quick change rear end shaft so that I could cut it up and put it into the gearbox. But since I got another quick change shaft, I was able to use the, uh, the more correct end that has a little bearing, um, little bearing thing on the end of it already. So basically 
this end here already has that built into the shaft so it's so I don't have to have a little extension on it so that was the whole point of that and so when I go to big horsepower and I want to go to putting both of the idler shafts back in I'm gonna have to buy me another quick change rear end shaft and cut it off because this end doesn't work this end is the end where you have to screw the little extension on right and that's just been only problems so it's a good thing i did do this because the bearings that ride on the end here were getting all messed up so you know this piece these pieces were broken off they're just kind of loose in there and they were just doing bad things to the bearings the uh parts that hold the little bearing balls in place were breaking apart so when i pulled those bearings out there was just tons of pieces of metal so obviously i put new bearings in so that we are good to go i had new gears to go in as well so obviously new parts again in the gearbox i bought out all of the company's quick change gears that are in that ratio so I'm good to go on that. In the long run, it probably would be nice to get the lightened quick change rear end gears for the gearbox so that it has, what would we call that, less rotational mass. But anyways, I'm not about to buy those really expensive lightened quick change rear end gears until I know that the gearbox is all solid and nothing's going to be breaking inside of there. So I kind of think that this version is gonna be pretty solid. So I'm kind of like 95% sure that this set up in the gearbox is going to work quite well in the last video we ended up running out of fuel and that's why i stopped riding i thought maybe something was more wrong with it but it turns out it was low on fuel and the thing that messed me up is that the fuel gauge is pretty much useless it reads about a quarter of a tank at all times as i'm showing you now for demonstration right now the tank has five gallons in it which is one third of a tank, it's a 15 gallon tank. So it always reads about a quarter of a tank, so it doesn't work right. I do need to take the sending unit out and figure out what's going on. I already tested the gauge and the gauge works properly. So there's something weird going on with the sending unit. I did purchase a gauge that was supposed to be set up for the ohm range that the sending unit uses but now i'm a bit unsure of what's all going on so this is really not that important of information but <laughs> i'll end up pulling the sending unit out uh, one of these times and uh, kind of going through it testing it and see what's going on with that this thing is ready to go out on the water and do some testing i do have my usb cable routed to this area so we will be able to do some data logging as long as my mind is able to figure that out when I'm out on the water because plugging a laptop in out on the water and everything can probably be a little bit stressful and weird so it might something weird could happen so <laughs> I don't guarantee that we'll get data but probably will um, I've already done a little bit of tuning uh, just the idle tuning to try to make it idle and uh, I've already fired it up a couple of times but this thing the way it's set up it really needs to be out on the water so that it can have you know water circulating through it this thing will be going out on the water soon so look for that in an upcoming video I do have a ton of other stuff going on as well but that's gonna do it for this one thanks for hanging out with me today and I will see you in the next video Ooh.